the Communist Minister of the Interior, Václav Nosek, refused to comply with the decision of the Council of Ministers to review and change the appointments of communist members only, of communist members only, to the highest positions of the police in Prague. The other political parties could not accept this unconstitutional step and for this reason handed in their resignations. The communists seized upon this pretext for the realization of their long premeditated plans and instructions. It is certain that if this opportunity had not presented itself to the communists in February, it would have been made a little later, but certainly before the general elections, which were to be held in May, it was inevitable for the following reasons. Premier Gottwald proclaimed several months ago that the communists would get more than 51% of the votes. Since it was then evident that the communists would not receive such a number of votes, Gottwald inferred that the putsch was already planned and prepared. Václav Kopetsky, Minister of Information, speaking in Brno at a meeting of the Communist Party on January 15, 1948, said in part, quote, the situation has developed in such a way that it will be necessary to call for a national front of somewhat new, regenerated form in which the leadership must be taken by leftist, progressive and socialistic elements which want to lead the nation and which have a positive attitude towards socialist aims." Unquote. All non-communist parties took a critical view of this speech. The same so-called Czechoslovak people who under similar terror during the German occupation demonstrated against President Beneš when the traitor Moravec spoke. It is a well-established fact and any investigating committee can prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that anyone who did not participate in the communist audit strike set simultaneously for a noon hour all over the country lost his or her job immediately and expects further punishment. Participation in the parades of demonstration was also compu compulsory and witnesses here in the United States now, can attest to the fact that high officials and typists alike wept as they were forced to march under the Soviet flags. The truly spontaneous expressions of the people who gathered to protest the coup, of which there were more than were reported in the newspapers, were immediately suppressed, the people silenced and dispersed by armed police. The channels of information The coup was engineered by the following so-called Czechoslovak political leaders, Clement Gottwald, Zdeněk Firling, Václav Kopecký, Zdeněk Nejedlý, Rudolf Stransky, and General Ludwig Svoboda. All these, without a single exception, and others not mentioned here, spent the war in the USSR, where they received the necessary training and precise instructions for their future actions. The coup d'etat in Czechoslovakia planned and executed, though it was by Gottwald, Firlinger and others, cannot be interpreted as a purely internal matter. The Communist Party affected its coup as innumerable pictures prove under Soviet flags as well as Czechoslovak, with Stalin's pictures with the emblems of the Soviet Revolution, the hammer and the sickle, and the Russian hymn in use with the Czechoslovak. The Communist Party always uses them in any action of force, but when it wished to gain the votes of the Czech people in the free and secret elections, it used only Czechoslovak emblems and symbols openly and hypocritically. If we read President Beneš's memoirs published in December last, this in direct aggression. Any thinking person believe that President Benesh could agree to the new government under Clement Gottwald without the greatest pressure, without duress, 
without the threat of the use of force? Can President Benesh, who studied democracy all his life, who worked for democracy, taught democracy, went into exile for democracy, and gave his very life for democracy, change overnight? Could President Benesh countenance the kind of rule of a terrorizing mass, a rule by force, which is a travesty of all legality and all law in Czechoslovakia? Could he bear to read the controlled Czechoslovak press, which lists innumerable names of people who are in prison, who are under surveillance and investigation? Could he give even tacit approval to the violation of the articles of our constitution and laws, which protect constitutional rights? Could he permit some of his oldest and best friends, co-workers in exile, his collaborators who spent years in concentration camps at the hands of the Germans because of that collaboration, and Czechoslovak citizens generally to be dismissed from their positions, robbed of their property without reason, to be jailed and put before special uh, so-called courts. I categorically reject any suggestion that President Benesh is a free man. I reject any possibility that he approved the new Gottwald regime or that he sanctions its actions without having the greatest pressure put upon him. I believe that President Benesh would have resigned immediately if he were a free man. I know positively that on Saturday, March 6, 1948, the Foreign Minister Jan Masaryk visited him at Sezimovo Usti. I know that on that day, the President said he was going to resign. I likewise reject categorically the supposition that the late Minister of Foreign Affairs Jan Masaryk spoke the words he did during his last days except under greatest pressure and duress. He could not make a move without two special guards assigned to him after the coup. For myself, I cannot accept the official explanation of his death as a suicide. I know that he planned to leave Czechoslovakia and begin to work for a free Czechoslovakia all over again. Troop movements in Austria also, near the southern boundary of Czechoslovakia. Here, let me quote in translation, where is a threat to peace, but particularly in that part of Europe, where East meets West, and where conflicts have begun to time and again. Terror has already been unleashed in its full fury in Czechoslovakia, and will be greater than in the countries of Eastern Europe, because it will be all the more difficult, if not impossible, for a truly democratic people to become accustomed to slavery. It is because of this terror that more and more people are fleeing from their homes, among them some of the best representatives of Czechoslovakia's political, economic, and cultural leadership, but among them, too, dangerous agents of the new terroristic Prague regime. The successful coup in Czechoslovakia and conflict, the fate that I have in the United Nations. I believe that the United Nations cannot and must not fail the freedom-loving people of Czechoslovakia who are now terrorized, silenced, and enslaved. The United Nations cannot and must not fail the rest of the freedom-loving people of Europe and the world whose freedom has been trampled or is now in peril. Thank you, Mr. President. I recognize the representative of Mr.